All right, guys, my YouTube money is gone. Not because actually the AdSense revenue thing I talked about at the end of one of my other videos, you guys have been asking about me in the comments. That's actually totally resolved. That was a big miscommunication with YouTube. That's fine. My money's gone because I spent it on this. Well, and this. And uh, well, I might need one of these. Probably not, but we'll see. Anyway, what did I get? Okay, so... <laughs> Um, basically, I don't get sent review samples. Maybe I need to figure out who to contact to ask for them. Hi, NVIDIA, Intel, can I have review samples? AMD, you got something coming out. Anyway, I probably need to figure out who to contact because I think my channel is growing to the point where that would be reasonable. But until then, uh, I spend my YouTube money on my own graphics cards to review. So I did just buy an Intel Arc A750 so that I can get some uh, Arc-related content. I'm looking at the value proposition. I'll be interested in, in long-term explorations of this card, seeing how the drivers improve over time, XCSS, uh, value versus NVIDIA and AMD, all of that. Um, but of, of course, we do have the uh, RTX 4090. Guys, this is the biggest graphics card box I have ever seen. Um, like, compared to the ARC A750, like, it's, it's not even close, guys. <laughs> Um, and the art cards aren't even that small. I mean, this is just the box, but, um, and I don't know if we're gonna need it, um, but just in case my power supply, actually, honestly, guys, I'm pretty confident my current 850 watt power supply is gonna be fine for the 4090. But I am curious, what if you did buy one of the new power supplies with the actual PCIe Gen 5 connector thing, and the only one I could find in stock uh, when I was searching happened to be 1650 watts. Um, actually, there was a 1,000-watt one available as well, but, uh, you know, I was thinking for long-term, I don't think I should ever need more power than this. So, uh, knock on wood, this will get me through the next 10 years of my uh, YouTube test bed, you know, power. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, so, uh, in this video, though, I think I want to unbox these things, plug them in, make sure they actually work, test them out just a little bit, and, you know what, let's just start opening these things up. All right, well, here's the box, and I'll apologize right now for the camera angle and microphone. I don't even have a table, guys. This is the ottoman in my basement. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, I have a table, just not where I film my YouTube videos. Uh, so anyway, this isn't usually an unboxing channel. I'm usually on a green screen, which I'm set up well for. So this kind of is what it is, but let's go ahead and open this thing up. Um... Well, there you go. I did get the Gigabyte model. This is the uh, Gigabyte Gaming OC, I believe is the model here. And I tried to buy whatever I actually could get on launch day. That's basically how we ended up with this one. I wasn't looking for any particular model. We just got what we got. Now, it's my understanding that these are probably the anti-sag brackets. I think you can strap the GPU, basically screw it into the case uh, to give it extra support because this thing, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Guys, it doesn't really come through in video, I'm sure, but this is the most ridiculously, stupidly large graphics card I have ever seen. I have bought most of the graphics cards that have come out in the past um, for the channel. We'll get to that in a second. What else do we have? So this is that four pin, four uh, eight pin connector uh, that goes to the six, 16 pin connector. So we will want to play around with my power supply. Uh, one issue with my power supply is I only have three eight pin connectors. Now that should let the GPU run at 450 watts. Um, but not be able to go um, up to the full 600 watts. Now, whether that's worth it performance-wise, it's probably honestly going to be more worthwhile to undervolt or, uh, than it is to overclock here. I'm guessing this must be the mounting hardware um, for our little, uh, like, uh, attach it to the case anti-sag bracket thing. Well, here it is. All right, it, it has it has qualified. <laughs> I'm at an incredibly awkward angle here, trying to open this with my camera tripod in the way. OK. 
Okay. Well, there we have it. We're going to get some plastic peels, that is for sure. Guys, again, since you don't really have scale for comparison, this is thick. <laughs> That's the technical term. You take these little things out. All right, looks like we have one HDMI. I, I would guess that would be HDMI 2.1. Um, and then we've got three display ports, which uh, are unfortunately not DisplayPort 2.0, but NVIDIA says that's not a problem, so. <laughs> okay, um, again, we'll need to do a plastic peel. Guys, does that font look kind of stupid to you? I, I don't feel like this font matches well with the Gigabyte logo here. And I've got to say, um, on a, I think this was $1,700 um, graphics card, I would hope it would look a little nicer. There's the little tiny 16-pin uh, power connector. It feels so, like, small given everything else we've got here. Now here's our BIOS uh, switch. Um, we've got it OC or silent mode. Looks like it defaults to the OC mode, so we'll leave it at that at first and see if we need to change anything. Uh, looks like we got some plastic peels to do. Uh, this one seems like it'll be the easier one. Not the most premium plastic peel, I feel like. And in general, guys, plastic on my $1,700 graphics card? By the way, I get some comments from people who know I'm a math teacher, like, how does a math teacher afford this? I don't. I would absolutely never have bought this um, if I was just doing it off of my income as a teacher. This is being paid for completely out of my YouTube ad revenue. So uh, please click on all my videos, watch all the ads. Anyway, <laughs> also huge thank you to people who have clicked the join button, uh, financially supporting me um, every month, and ac sometimes early access to videos and some such. That plastic peel felt a little bit better. All right, at least it's actually metal here. That feels like metal. Um, I'm also better uh, better with the look of this. The logos look better there. Like I said, I, I'm not a huge fan of how it looks here. Maybe when that lights up, it'll look a little bit better. I believe this does have, I, I think these white uh, rings here are um, RGB. So we'll at least have that going for us. It should go faster you know, with all that RGB. Is that it? Are we are we plastic peeled um, all the way? Do we wanna do we wanna see if it even fits in a, in my case? <laughs> Let's check. Actually before we go ahead and plug in the 4090 into the PC, uh, why don't we compare it to the ARC uh, GPU? So this is the A750, which it seems like generally performs very close to the A770, according to the other reviews I have watched, uh, but costs a lot less. So this uh, seemed like the more interesting of the two, plus the other one was sold out. Wow, this is this feels tiny compared to what we just unboxed. Intel Arc. Here's the, you know, honestly, I really like the look of these. Now it is plastic, but I mean, guys, it's, and I, and feels like there's at least some metal on here and such, but I don't mind a little bit more plastic on a GPU that, uh, you know, is less than $300 compared to a GPU that costs, um, you know, close to $2,000. <laughs> All right, so a little dual fan thing. Now, should we, uh, should we dare to compare sizes? All right, here comes the 4090. Here's the A750. Um, I don't know if I can get you guys an adequate like angle to compare, 
But basically, this thing is like a tiny fraction of two of the fans on the 4090. <laughs> oh man, that's kind of hilarious. Now, um, to be honest, I think the ARC GPU is going to uh, have to wait until I'm done playing with the 4090. Sorry, Intel, I'm a little more excited about this ridiculous monster. And so um, we'll, we'll hang on to that idea for the future. But <laughs> let's go ahead and see this thing in my PC. All right, so up until now, my main GPU has been this uh, RTX 3080 12 gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte Eagle version. I got that because it was, uh, you know, at the time, the cheapest model available. And that's what I was looking for. Now, it runs off of these two 8-pin connectors, but we are going to need more power. So um, here's the thing. I've got this 850-watt power supply, which, like I said, I think will work. But right now, I'm only running two of the actual power cords out of the power supply. Now, this is really important. These do daisy chain, so technically, um, I could plug in four eight pins from these two cables out of my power supply. But that will now then be drawing more than the recommended spec of power through these cables, and that is never recommended. So um, I'm gonna actually, I have to uh, open up my PC, and again, I don't have a good angle to film this, so I'll probably do it off camera, and install a third power connector here. Uh, before we put in the uh, ridiculous monster here he, guys like here it is I mean I get that that's closer to the camera so that's like affecting the angle but guys I have a big case this thing is just barely gonna fit <laughs> I hope it fits okay the good news is we now have a third capable uh, capable <laughs> cable coming out of the power supply uh, so we should now be able to get at least 450 watts to this thing now, the next thing we need to figure out is the mounting bracket. Uh, so remember, we've got this hardware, and I'm fairly certain that what's going to happen is that this will bolt down here. I think there's these uh, motherboard screws, and these would be standard, so you know they can count on you having these screw positions here and here. Um, and I think this... Uh, we'll need to go here, and I think they're providing standoffs to raise it up to the right height, at least hopefully. And then the uh, GPU itself will get this bracket screwed onto it, and then these will kind of hook in and get uh, a little screw going through there. And I did eventually figure out there's a, there's a manual, guys, and, and it looks like I was right. Um, so it looks like we screw in the uh yeah there's, there's these little standoffs that will go into the motherboard on those screws and then um yeah that's in position here we screw into the gpu itself and then um it, like i said i think it hooks onto the little uh the little clip there so i'm gonna go ahead and do that okay so i now have this bracket installed on the standoffs and then on the gpu itself uh, you slide on, like I said, th this bracket through there, it kind of screws on. I think this slides under here so that when the uh, this takes the kind of the weight of this trying to tip down, if that makes sense. And I believe the last step is to actually slot it in and then kind of run this behind the standoff and screw it on. So, wow, this thing is heavy at this weird camera angle I've got to be at. Try not to drop it on my PC and destroy everything. Wait, does that slot behind? I think that slots behind. Um, like, is it in? <laughs> Didn't hear the PCIe slot, like, click? I mean, I guess it's in. I usually feel the uh, PCIe slot kind of snap in. All right, so here comes this thing. And we've got to get a whole bunch of, uh, well, three of the eight pins in here. And that should be enough. Again, very careful not to do two off the same daisy chain. Want to make sure 
all of them are on their own connection to the motherboard. Okay, so we've got three power cables. You know, it'll be a future video where I think I'll try out the uh, power supply with this thing in it. I just don't think I have time to install it today. Man, this, this thing is hideous though. Like this would be an elegant solution if it actually, you know, if people owned power supplies that fit these things, but needing this connector just looks kind of dumb, doesn't it? This really shouldn't be the hardest part. There it is. Okay, now, moment of truth, does the case actually close? So I've heard some people with smaller cases are having issues with the uh, power connectors not making it over. Now this is not going for beauty. That is a mess of cables. Um, we'll solve that problem later. Let's see if this thing even boots. All right, so I've decided to fire up Cyberpunk and uh, MSI Afterburner just to monitor all the settings and everything. Wow, currently looks like we are defaulting to not 4K resolution. Let's try switching that to actually 4K resolution. Okay, now I can actually see things. Now, let's talk about the graphic settings in this game. Let's try out the ultra settings, but wait, there's no apply button. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something that does trigger the apply button, like turn on DLSS, but then turn DLSS back off again. And now these settings have actually applied. And by the way, just to be clear, I'm not planning that, this is not my big review of the RTX 4090. This is me testing the GPU to see if it seems to be functioning properly. Are we um, performing well? <laughs> Are we performing like we should? Well, it looks like we're now, uh, this is a difficult scene of the benchmark. It gets easier after this point. And it looks like, ah, we did dip below 60 FPS for a split second. Again, this is native 4K ultra settings without ray tracing. Uh, looks like the GPU temps are well under 60, although obviously this is just a few seconds into the benchmark. Uh, looks like we are pulling um, up over 400 watts at times. The clock speed is going to 2730 on its own. Um, and yeah, the frame rate seems quite good. Notice that my, my RTX 3080, for example, uh, can absolutely not maintain anywhere close to 60 frames per second at native 4K at ultra settings, and that's even without ray tracing. So yeah, basically what I'm doing here is confirming that this GPU is indeed quite fast, and it does seem to be actually working. I'm not seeing anything that looks like a uh, visual artifact or anything... Um, anything crazy like that. Now, let's go ahead and turn on ray tracing because I am quite curious to see um, the 4K ray tracing because, you know, <laughs> um, as I did in a video uh, recently, I corrected a certain review. Um, I don't believe we're gonna be uh, just crushing 4K ray tracing without DLSS. So let's go ahead and try that out. Uh, so let's try RT Ultra. Um, should I go ahead and kick on the psycho lighting? In other words, let's actually max this game out. Notice I did get the apply button there, so I think we actually do have these settings applied. But DLSS defaults to auto. Let's kick that off. And again, I actually clicked the apply button, so it should be applied. And I'm very curious um, if you know how this will be at the native resolution i think this is actually going to be pretty bad cyberpunk is is still incredibly demanding uh even for a gpu like the rtx 4090 and uh yeah sure enough we are down um below 40 fps in this scene although i think other scenes will be easier hey we managed to stay above 30. now again we're not using dlss yet so we'll definitely want to test that out the other thing I'm looking for here is that, um, uh, well, my, my RTX 3080, for example, um, it, it's, it's like in the teens running this kind of a benchmark. So to be clear here, well, this, uh, this frame rate is by no means like, hey, I can just max out any game I want at 60 FPS with ray tracing at 4K. 
Um, it is a massive improvement over what was previously possible on this game. So that's really good to see. I was also just kind of curious what would happen as I stressed the ray tracing um, with the full native workload at, at the native resolution. Notice the clock speeds seem a bit lower here um, than they did at the rasterized performance, but not much, and we're still kind of bouncing up and down around that uh, 400 watt range. Uh, this is a pretty short benchmark, so the, uh, um, the temperatures seem to be staying very under control. Now my PC's I, audible, like I can hear the fans, but but they're not particularly loud. I test out a lot of GPUs and I can tell you, uh, cards like my, you know, Founders Edition 3070 Ti, things like that, um, get a lot louder. Um, let's go ahead and try DLSS quality, because here's kind of the moment of truth. For me, DLSS quality at 4K resolution is generally like completely acceptable. It, it, certain elements of the image in some games will look better than native, certain elements will look worse than native, but overall it's not a significantly worse than native experience in the vast majority of games. And I'm curious, can I max out 4K Cyberpunk psycho ray tracing and hold 60 FPS Looks like we saw the minimum dip there slightly below 60 for just a second, um, but it looks like we are now back up over 60. Now again, also let's talk about the built-in benchmark of Cyberpunk. Um, it's certainly not the most demanding scene of the entire game. It's incredibly convenient to run though. It's a nice short benchmark and does take you through a variety of scenes. Uh, like as we go through here, you see the ray, ray traced reflections in the puddle, things like that. Um, overall, the GPU itself, uh, all the stats up there seem to be uh, looking good, so I'm happy with it. We're up over 70 FPS now in the mid-60s. So again, this is something that was just not possible on my RTX 3080. Uh, maxing out the ray tracing in this game and uh, you know trying to play the game at 4K would mean to be hitting 60 FPS even, I'd have to be on ultra performance DLSS and it would honestly look quite bad. So uh, this is cool. I'm, I'm happy to see this. Uh, why don't we go ahead and run a, uh, a, a test at 1440p with these same settings, just to see like if you're on a 1440p monitor rather than a 4K monitor, uh, what sort of, um, uh, you know, you know, like we saw at 4K, were 60 FPS with DLSS quality. But what if we were down at 1440p with DLSS quality? Um, I'm curious now if we're gonna actually get a pretty high refresh rate experience uh, with still very good visual quality. Now notice that I'm running this at the full screen scratch ra rather than letterboxing it down here, but guys, I'm filming the screen anyway, so uh, you know, uh, this is uh, not, you know, this is stretched out onto my um, 4K screen. But I did want to kind of see what, what sorts of, um, you know, performance numbers we'd put up here. Looks like we're over 100 FPS most of the time. So it's looking like if you were wanting to get this GPU for 1440p in order to just max out ray tracing, uh, this is looking pretty good. Although keep in mind that according to all of the NVIDIA marketing stuff we saw with the launch of this game, there is going to be, uh, sorry, with the launch of these GPUs, they were highlighting an even more demanding ray tracing setting with the ray tracing overdrive mode. And, you know, ray tracing overdrive mode, I'm curious to test that out because as we saw here already, uh, the 4K ray tracing was extremely demanding. Here it's looking like with DLSS quality, you can finally get a high refresh rate, maxed out experience. For me personally, in a first person uh, shooter type game, I like to be around 90 FPS uh, for the camera to feel really, really smooth. So it's nice to see that at 1440p, Looks like it's going to be uh, delivering that type of an experience. Um, certainly some dips, but yeah, our average, at least in the benchmark, and again, there are more demanding areas in the game, uh, looking quite good. All right, well, I fired up my Spider-Man save, and let's go ahead and pop in here. Okay, hey, low, the reflex is grayed out, upscaling. 
Uh, we've got DLSS. Wait, frame generation is grayed out and it's telling me that I need a 40 series graphics card. So I have one. I'm wondering if somehow, um, maybe I need to reinstall my drivers. You know what, guys? I'm gonna go ahead and see if there's something going on with my drivers because I feel like I should be able to turn on frame generation right now. Okay, I've fixed it. It was not the driver. Um, so what you have to do is go to graphics settings. So on your actual PC settings, and you have to enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Apparently this is turned on by default on Windows 11, but on Windows 10, unless you have turned this on, you need to turn it on and restart your PC. Uh, I believe that that should have fixed the problem. That's what the developers said on their uh, post. So I actually just looked at if they had a post on how to enable it. And um, please actually work now. Yes, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is on. And we do have DLSS frame generation on now. Okay, currently I'm just using frame generation without any upscaling. So the input is actually native 4K. Um, so interesting. And then here's my graphics settings. Basically things turned up pretty high. And you guys now get to experience my first experience with DLSS frame generation. I can already tell you something felt a little bit weird. Uh, scrolling pat like guys you're on a 30 frames per second video so I'm, I'm guessing this is not gonna pick everything up to you but I'm gonna tell you right now something feels weird when it pans with the water over the building here it, it, I feel like it's a little bit choppy um, like there's a little extra water for a split second frame um, I mean frame rates seem really good so there's that uh, Spider-Man's body, when he f swings around, it, it kind of feels like there's little bits of extra aliasing around Spider-Man. Um, I don't, things overall look pretty good. Yeah, running up the wall, I feel like, I don't know, there's, there's little ghosty bits of his, um, of his arms and things. So... I, I don't know, guys. Uh, anyway, I need to play around with the graphics settings a little bit. Um, my initial impression here is that, for one thing, it's annoying that I can't use a frame rate limiter uh, in games because I, I get a little bit of screen tearing, so that could be part of what I, <laughs> part of what's annoying me about the image quality. Because uh, my monitor goes up to 120 hertz, so you do get a little bit of screen tearing when you go past that. I don't know, guys, on rapid camera swings, and this is even with a controller, uh, now, I've never played this game with keyboard and mouse. I have no idea what the buttons do. Um, but I do know I'll be able to swing my camera a lot more rapidly. And I, f I feel like the image breaks up around Spider-Man quite a bit there. Now, obviously, you're not going to be doing that much when you're actually playing a game. But yeah, it seems like whenever there's these rapid screen transitions, um, I don't know how to tell it. And it's probably not picking up really well on the camera, but... It's, it's just choppy around the edges. You get you definitely do feel like there's some bad frames in there. So anyway, I'm not going to say this is a bad technology that I would never use. I can say right now with the, with the frame rates this high, I don't notice any real input latency. So maybe if I was on a lower baseline, res, like, you know, if my initial input frame rates were lower, maybe I would notice the input latency more or if I was playing a competitive shooter or something like that, but at least at these high frame rates, um, the input latency is not really an issue for me. Um, I've got to say though, I, I, I'm not loving the image quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off just to um, see if maybe it's just the game itself isn't great and I'm, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm just being picky. But no, see now when I when I pan quickly back and forth like that, the image is just significantly more stable. The outlines of Spider-Man's body against the high contrast uh, background, things like that. Um, I don't know. Let's let's fly around here a bit more, running up the walls and things. Yeah, the the qu it's the quick camera transitions uh, over Spider-Man's body. It certainly seems more stable with the natives. So anyway, that's gonna be a lot more testing from me. But my initial impression is that I'd probably avoid using it unless I was in a situation where, I don't know, I guess I really needed the frames. Um, 
Yeah. Anyway, this is not my full review video. This is my first impressions video. So there's my first impressions. It gained us some frames, that's for sure, but they... I don't know, guys. I, I, I'm preferring the image quality here at native um, without the frame generation. So we'll, we'll definitely leave it at that. It is not as good as the native image quality, but like I said, the... Uh, the baseline input latency is so good here that I wasn't really uh, feeling any kind of latency in this brief test. I hope all of you have an excellent day. I need to do a whole bunch of benchmarking and testing.